In <clears throat> this lesson, we're going to look at optimization. Um, so the optimal value is what we would consider the best value. So it's either usually a maximum or a minimum value, depending on the context of the problem. So a few strategies we can use. Make sure that you read the question carefully. Um, determine which needs to be maximized or minimized. Um, and then we'll look at what is fixed and what might vary. Uh, a diagram is always helpful. Make sure you're assigning variables to any measurements and note any relationship between the variables. Then we'll create an algebraic model, so a, an equation. And then we're going to use the first derivative test or the second to determine whether it's a max or min. Um, make sure that if there's any endpoints, you evaluate those as well. And then answer the question. Okay, you'd be surprised how many people don't actually answer the question. So make sure that you're answering the question that is being asked. Okay, so in example one, it's pretty straightforward question. We have two positive real numbers whose sum is 70 and whose product is as large as possible. So two things we are told about these variables. I'm going to call my variables x and y. I know that the sum is 70. So x plus y equals 70, and we want the product, so x times y, to be as large as possible. So we want it to be a maximum. So we want to uh, create an equation that has only one variable in it so that, we can ha so that we can solve the function. So I'm going to isolate either x or y from my sum because the product is what we want to be the maximum. So we want to use this product equation to solve this question. So I'm going to isolate for y and then I'm going to substitute that into the product equation for y. So it would become x times 70 minus x equals a maximum. I'm just going to say m of x. So let's expand. So there's my function that um, represents the product of these two. So now we want to find the maximum. So we'll take the derivative of this. So it would be minus 2x plus 70. And we want to find the critical numbers because that's where the max could occur. And then we'll just solve for x. So x equals 35. And then if I substitute back into my y equation, y would be 70 minus 35. So y would be 35. Now I could check with my second derivative. So if I take the second derivative of this equation, uh, it would be minus 2. And since it is a negative value, it doesn't really matter what x is. It's always going to be a negative value. So that means that it will be a max. So that confirms that it is a maximum value. And so the two possible numbers are 35 and 35. Second example, what are the dimensions of a rectangle with an area of 64 with the smallest possible perimeter? So this is what we want to solve for, is the perimeter. So I'm going to draw a diagram that would be helpful in this question. So we have a rectangle with an area of 64. So my dimensions of my rectangle would be length times width or x times y, and we know that has to be 64. The perimeter of this rectangle would be two lengths plus two widths, so two x and two y. Um, so we want to solve the, we want to find the smallest perimeter, the minimum perimeter. So I want to isolate my area and solve for perimeter. So it doesn't really matter which variable I isolate for. Uh, I'm just going to isolate for x. And then I'm going to take this and substitute it in for the x into the perimeter. So perimeter would be 2 times 64 over y plus 2y. So let's um, expand. So 2 times 64 over y is 128. And I'm just going to bring the y to the 
numerator so that I can find the derivative easily plus 2y. So now we want to find p prime. So it'd be negative 1 times 128. Subtract 1, so that'd be to the negative 2 plus 2. And we want to find the critical number, so we'll replace that with 0. Just going to put this back to the bottom. Okay, so I'm going to bring the 128 uh, over this side to make it positive. I'll cross multiply. Divide both sides by 2. And then square root. So y will be 8. And then I can go back to my area formula. I know that x times y has to be 64. So that means x is also 8. Now, if we wanted to double check for a whether it's a minimum, we could find p, the second derivative. Um, so it would be negative 2 times um, 128. What's that? is 256 y to the negative 3 and then we can sub in 8 into this and see what result we get. And we get 0 0.5 which is a positive result which tells us that it is a minimum value. Okay, it's moving on. So here we have a farmer who has a 60 meters of fencing to enclose a rectangular pen beside a barn. Um, one thing to note is that the farmer is going to use a wall as one of the sides. So when I'm drawing my diagram here, uh, he will not need fencing on this side because that's where the barn is going to be. So I'm going to have two sides here and one side here that I need fencing. So my perimeter is going to be two x's and one y and I have 60 meters to do that. It wants to find maximum area. Missing an a there. So area would be x times y. Uh, since we want maximum area we want to solve the area equation. So we're going to isolate for either x or y. I'm going to isolate for y because it has a single coefficient. So rather than deal with fractions, I'm just going to use the y. So we're going to substitute this into the area formula for y. And we will expand to give us our area equation. And then since we want the maximum area, we'll use the first derivative to determine that. So it'll be 60 minus 4x. We want the critical value, which is 0. And we will solve for x. So x will be 15 meters. <coughs> if x is 15 meters, then y is 60 minus 2x. So y is 30 meters. So the dimensions would be 30 by 15 and that would give us an area of 450 meters squared. So just make sure that you answer the question. It says find the maximum area, so I want to make sure that I include that in my solution. In this question, we are going to make a box out of a rectangular piece of metal. So here's our rectangular piece of metal. The rectangular piece of metal is 100 centimeters by 60. So we'll put those dimensions on there and then we want to cut corners out of the equal squares out of the corners. So these corners are going to be x by x and they're all going to be the same. So we're going to cut these out and then we're going to fold it up to make a box. And we want that box 
to give us maximum volume. Okay, so what do we know? Well, we know that volume is going to be length times width times height. So when I'm looking at the length of the box, this is the length of the box. So this is going to be the 100 minus the two x's on either side. So it's 100 long, but we're going to subtract two x's on each end because that's going to be the new length. And then the new width is going to be 60, also subtracting x from each end. And then the height of the box is x as we fold it up. And so if we expand this, we are going to get x times, I'm just going to expand the two brackets first. And then I'll multiply by x. So we'll get 4x to the power of 3. So there's my equation for the volume of the box. And I want to find maximum volume. So we'll find the derivative. And we want to find the critical value. So we'll set it equal to 0. That's a negative. Now, at this point, you can try to factor. I'm just going to go straight to the quadratic formula, just because there's large numbers, and I'm not sure if I can factor it, so I'm just going to not waste my time. I'm just going to use the quadratic formula. So we've got minus and negative 640, so that makes it positive 640. Uh, b squared minus 4ac all over. 2 times a, which is 12. And so if we type that into the calculator in the square root, we're going to get 1,200 or 12,160 all over 24. And so we'll get two solutions for x. Uh, one of them is 41.2 and the second one is 12.14. So then we have to make sure that these solutions are reasonable. The value for 41.2 is going to be too long for the measurements. Since the side is only going to be 60, we can't have 41.2 on either side. That would be longer than 60. So that would be like 82. So that's too long. So this one's too, too long. And so the 12.14 would be my solution. So sometimes your solutions aren't always valid. You have to check and make sure in the context of the question whether they are valid solutions or not. So my dimensions would be width or height of 12.14. Uh, my length is going to be 100 minus 2 times 12.14. And stop. So 100 minus 2 times 12.14 is 75.72. And then my width is going to be 60 minus 2 times 12.14. And that's 35.72. So those would be my dimensions of the box. OK, in this question, we're going to do make a flyer. So the flyer is going to be rectangular. And the area of the flyer has to be 120 centimeters squared. They are going to print on that flyer. So here's the printed area. 
and there's going to be margins. So the margins are 2.5 centimeters wide at the top and the bottom. So this measurement needs to be 2.5 and then 1.5 on the sides. So what should the dimensions of the flyer be so that the area with print will be as large as possible? So we don't know the dimensions of the printed area, so we'll call it X and Y. So what do we know? We know that the area of the printed area the dimensions are going to be um, x. Sorry, I put these x's on the wrong spot here. These are the on the outside. So we don't know the oops. We don't know the dimensions of the flyer. So we'll call this x and y. And we want this printed area to be as large as possible. So the area of the printed area would be x minus the margins. So 2 times 1.5 is 3. And then the y minus the margins would be y minus 5. And we want that printed area to be as large as possible. So if the area of the flyer x is x times y, we want to isolate for either x or y and then substitute into this area for the printed portion. So let's isolate for x. So I'm going to substitute this in to the equation for, oops, sorry, I'm isolating for y. Isolate for y. Okay, so in this equation, I am replacing y with 120 over x. Okay, so I want the area is 120. That's what I have to work with, and I want maximum print area. And so let's just expand this equation. So x times 120 over x is just 120. Uh, we have x times negative 5, we have negative 3 times 120 is one is 360 over x. So I'm just going to bring the x as a power and then plus 15. So we'll collect like terms. So there's my equation for the area of the printed pr portion. And I want that to be the maximum area of the printed. So I'm going to do I prime, A prime. Set that equal to 0. And then we're going to solve. So I'll bring the 5 to the other side. I'm going to bring the x squared to the bottom. I'm going to cross multiply. And so x is going to be the square root of 360 divided by 5. So if I punch that into the calculator, it works out to be 8.4 centimeters. And then I can go back to find y. I know that the area, which was x times y, was 120 x is 8.4, so we'll divide and y will be 14.3. So x is 8.4 long and y is 14.3. That would be the area of the printed portion. Okay, last one here. This one is a cylinder. So we are given the volume of the cylinder is 500 milliliters. And we want to determine the measurements of the radius and height that minimizes the surface area of the can. So what do we know? We know volume. Volume of a cylinder 
is the area of the circle, which is the base, so pi r squared times the height of the cylinder. Surface area of a cylinder is two circles, so 2 pi r squared, plus the rectangular portion, which is 2 pi r h. And we want to minimize surface area, so we want to work with the surface area formula. Now, we know volume is 500, and so I'm going to look at this and decide which variable I want to isolate for. So, when I'm looking at this, I could isolate for r or h. The r is squared, so I'm going to isolate for the h. So that makes it easy when I'm substituting. So I want the surface area. I'm going to replace the h with the 500 over pi r squared. So now I have an equation that only contains r, and I should be able to solve for r. So let's clean this up a little bit. So in this part, the pi's would cancel, and one of the r's. So that leaves me with 2 times 500 is 1,000, and we have an r in the denominator, so I'll just put it as a negative 1. So this is my formula for surface area, and I want s prime. So we'll do 2 times 2 pi is 4 pi r, and we'll do negative 1 times 1,000, and then subtract 1. So this is my first derivative. I'm going to set it equal to 0. and then we're going to solve for r. Um, so what can we do here? We could factor out a 4, and we could factor out uh, an r to the negative 2. So in the first term that would leave me with the pi, and then uh, r divided by r to the negative 2 would be r plus 2, so that would be r to the power 3. And then that would leave me with 250 in the second term. Now, you could do it other ways, but I'm going to do it this way. So I have two factors. So I know 4 pi r to the negative 2, set that equal to 0. Um, so that gives me an invalid answer, because I would have 4 pi times, uh, I would have r squared times 0, which is 0, and that's not possible. So that's not a valid solution. And then we'll use this one, set this equal to 0, and then we'll solve for r. So r will be 250 divided by pi, and then we're going to take the third root. And so that works out to be 4.3 centimeters. And then we can go back and find h, because we know that um, h was 500 divided by pi r squared. And h works out to be 8.6. So the dimensions. I'll just answer the question. The radius would be 4.3 centimeters, and the height would be 8.6 centimeters.